Jadron here. What's going on, guys? We've got the Hubson Nano Q4. This thing is small. Bam! It is small. We are using a Firefly 7S as opposed to my Tinker 4K that I normally use. Battery's dead on this, and I didn't have a charge, so that's why we are using Firefly 7S, not to be confused with the Q6 or the $20 um, little micro one. But there it is versus a 010. It's mighty big, the original controller. For the 010s here, that's also the same size as that controller, but we're going to do a little bit bigger. We're going to go a little bit bigger. We have the T8SG, we have the new T16 here, we have the T12 here, which we won't be using in this. Um, the T12 and the T16 run on OpenTX, or if you've upgraded the T12, it runs on uh, Jumper TX, which actually it, the T16's upgraded the Jumper TX. The one thing that I'd like to show you with the T8SG versus the T16 is deviation versus uh, OpenTX or Jumper TX if you have it upgraded. We're going to go ahead and turn this little guy on right in the back. White lights in the eyes and blue in the front. Go ahead and turn it on. It stops flashing. It's binding. It should just bind. I don't think we have to do anything. Let's see. No, it does that occasionally. Let's try again. We're going to try again. I don't know why it does that. Um, the protocol is not 100% on this. So let it look. Let... I'm gonna let it flash for two seconds then we're gonna turn this on again there we go so the lights went out once it binds the lights goes out on the t8sg running deviation um bam lights on lights off it was simple to find the channel that it was on uh just go into your mixers and start assigning channels until lights go on and off so we could turn them on and off here that's basically all i wanted to show you with this um we're gonna go ahead and turn this off now uh, we are going to also, all our switches are up. I'm going to show you a little bit of the features on this as we start it up. We're going to put our throttle midway. We are going to put a switch down and we are going to go ahead and turn it on. Welcome to Jumper TX. Throttle warning. Throttle warning. Switch warning. Switch warning. So one of these switches got to find the switch. Bamzo. And then fail safe warning. I don't have a fail safe set. So it gives you those warnings, which are nice, uh, and it gives you them pretty darn clear uh, when you start up. We're going to go ahead and turn this off once more. Now that our switches and everything are where they should be, we're going to turn this on. We're going to turn this on. I already have it bound to it. It's running on H107C protocol. Failsafe warning. Once you get out of the failsafe warning, quite stop again. Why does it do that? Um, again, it's the protocol on this that is not 100%. We're going to go ahead and turn it off. I mean, it is 100%. I've flown on it, zero issues. But it's like hit or miss whether it's going to take it. So we're going to let it flash. Maybe maybe you got to let it sit a second before you do that. Before you go ahead and buy into it. There we go. Lights are out. So, lights are out. I can now throttle up and whatnot. Um, I can't find the channel on this to turn the lights on and off. Uh, I've said it in the past, a lot of people swear by OpenTX, Jumper TX, whatever you may, uh, that's kind of the standard on drone flying because you could adjust uh, you could adjust your curves a little bit better than you could can with deviation. But when it goes to toy grade, the deviation protocols, I think are a little bit better worked. But let's go in here. To get into our model, we simply hold this button here underneath their system. It's labeled MDL, which would be model. And then we click the middle one here, which will go over, over, over. I don't know how well you guys can see this. Um, let's see here. Try to go in here, make sure we're still recording. We are still recording. So, as you can see right there, it is R-E-T-A, okay? I'm going to go ahead and press the next page. This is A-E-T-R. I had to adjust those to make it A-E-T-R, and you can see channel 1 is negative 100. Um, I also had to reverse that. So keep that in mind, know what your drone is running, and make sure it corresponds to it. And to change those out, it's really simple. You just hold this, you click edit, and then you would go down here, you would click this and change it to whatever you need to. You would go down here, click that, and if you wanted to reverse it, you would go up to 100. Um, the opposite of 100, which what it was, would be negative 100. Um, so, and then we could just back out, back out, back out. We're going to give this a little fly in here. This will be the first thing I've flown with this, um, just to kind of get a feel for it. And also, we are showcasing this drone. I've been sitting on it. Um, Nano Q4. I got it for $7. 
Um, I'll link the eBay store that I use uh, for hubs and stuff down below. They got tons of cheap stuff, man. So we are going to go up. And, okay, my rudder needs to be reversed as well. So we will go ahead and do that. We'll hold model. We will jump over here to mixers. Hopefully you guys are able to see this. And I went way too far. So let's go back around. Um, mixers. Let's go down here. Nope. Sorry about that. We need to go. What are you doing, J-Drone? All right. I need to click back. <laughs> and then we are going to go down here. Long hold. Click edit. And then we need to simply just reverse left, 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 left. Which uh, I'm going to go ahead and just stop this. I'm going to do it. And then uh, we'll restart this video. Alright, so we're at negative 95. That takes a while, man. You, you figure from 100 to negative, um, and again, we just roll this way to get to negative 100, and then press in. And then we can press back, we can press back. We should be good to fly, and you can see negative 100 on channel 1 and negative 100 on uh, channel 4. Um, that takes a while to do. You figure that's 200 spin, 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 spin. I think there should be an auto scroll where when you get into there, you should be able to hold this. Hold that and you just go down. Um, there is another way to reverse channels on OpenTX. I don't know how to do it. After I load this video, I'm going to figure out how to do it because I think it's a little bit simpler than that. But let's get this drone in the air already. So we are up and bam. Dude, these, the control on this is so smooth. Um, what I want to see, we're just going to kind of buzz around here quickly, buzz around here quickly. I mean, this is a super small and I got to try to maintain my orientation without any type of lights. Easier said than done. Go ahead and grab this. That'll be a good time for me to look at what I wanted to look at being I have the T8SG here. So when I go like that, this really springs back to center. Um, there's tension, there's a little bit of tension, which I don't think is a bad thing, versus this, and so you got, jumping from these three, you have extremely loose, extremely loose, a little bit more tension, and we have a considerable amount of tension on this. Um, I'm thinking that's a good thing. I'm thinking that's a good thing. It feels good. And somebody asked me as far as feel in this, with this in my hands, um, hopefully you can see this. I have very large hands. My hands are big. I mean, my hands can, I, I can easily palm the jumper. Um, I'm not easily palming this. Uh, like I, palming the, palming the T8SG is no problem. I'm not palming this. This is much bigger. As far as width goes, Again, I can very easily palm the T8SG. I might, it's, I can't. I cannot palm this either way. I mean, I might be able to do it if these switches weren't in the way. But uh, it's, it's considerably, even with, it's considerably wider, left to right, up and down, uh, longer. Um, so it's, it is a little bit more comfortable in my large hands. Um, the T8SG, I never really had a problem with it. Um, never really had a problem with the size. It, it's kind of kind of like a wrapper on, almost like a gamer style controller because that's what you do on gamer style controllers. I don't know. This is kind of like a gamer style controller where you're basically wrapped around the controller and not so much on the outs like this. This is typical to probably what most drone flyers are using. And again, you would be more comfortable to pinch on this than you would with that. Um, a lot of information I'm throwing at you guys. Uh, it's, I mean, new controller, man. I'm stoked about new controller. We can also get out of this now. We can get out of this. And um, while I have this with me, uh, why why not just go, uh, we'll, we'll go into our model menu here. And we'll go down one. I don't know how well this is transitioning on the camera. Um, model image. And then we'll just go up here, and then we'll go back. Now we have a quadcopter there. We could name this. I'm not going to worry about naming it right now. 
Um, and then we can also go into our telemetry page and we can, now we have a three page telemetry and we can then click here and say, I wanted to see my channels and everything. Um, that's good. We can then go back and now I can see channel one, two, three. I can see I'm negative 100 on my throttle and everything else is zeroed out. Um, as I go here, you can see channel four. Now we're all the way left channel and it is reversed. My rudder, my rudder, my channel four is reversed. That's why it's not corresponding with this. And then up, down, left and right. And again, my left and right's reversed. Um, so it gives you options, kind of a review on the drone, kind of review on my new toy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this up in the air again. Really smooth. I know there's already been questions about can you put haul gimbals in this. I'm sure you could, but I don't think you need to. Because although these aren't labeled haul gimbals to my, uh, to my knowledge, they're extremely smooth. And I think, uh, I think they're dubbed like some type of bearing gimbals where they are upgraded gimbals and they're not just your toy grade gimbals. This is a little zipper. Again, $7, guys. I picked this up for $7. It's raining out. I can fly this in my living room and not get the dogs all crazy uh, and not get my wife all mad that I'm buzzing drones around her head and whatnot and bothering her while she's doing her work or while she's watching TV or whatever. Uh, small drone like this is good money. I think this is the smallest drone I have. The Nemo, uh, World Tech Toys Nemo, that the battery constantly dies. Uh, if you got a good battery in one of those, consider yourself lucky. Look at the yaw rate. Let's bring it over here. Let's bring it over here. Look at a yaw rate. Yaughty, yaughty, yaw. Woo, easy. Got it, got it, got it. And again, a little bit difficult orientating uh, with uh, no LEDs. And I have yet to go full pitch left or right. You can see how zippy this is. Or forward even. Um, I mean, I don't know. Try to hold this here so you can see what I'm doing. I don't know if it's going to transition on camera. It should. It's catching the drone. So I'm just barely moving left and right. Barely. And the pitch rate's ridiculous. I'm going to go ahead and hold right. And the thing drops altitude considerably. Nice fun drone to fly around, man. Super spinny. Going some yaws. Yaw, yaw, yaw for y'all. No, that's back. Bam. Woo. Easy there. Easy. Whoo. So as far as how, whoo, back it up. Is, whoa, oh, 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 oh. It, yeah, saved it. Um, as far as how this controller feels in my hands, it feels good. It's it's got some weight to it though. It definitely has some weight to it. The weight's no issue for me. Um, but just gearing up against other controllers. It's probably, the weight's probably more comparable to a Tyrannus uh, QX7. Now we got blinky lights, so we're going to go ahead and bring this over here. And we just kill throttle. Hand catch, yeah. So the weight's probably comp more comparable to QX7. How do I know that? Because I've flown with a QX7. One of my friends that does builds, that's the drone controller he uses. And when he came over to fly on my flight field, I was flying his drones off of his controller. Um... So th this is definitely, not to say these weren't hobby grade by any, like, not to say, hey, these aren't hobby grade, these are toyish. They're far from toyish. This is toyish. I mean, <laughs> you can hear the trims moving around and stuff. This is super plastic um, versus, we can hear something moving there. Let's see. Might be one of the trims too. And then we'll do a shaky. You could lightly hear something. I don't know. Something in there is lightly moving. Um, but, uh, it, dude, weight comparison. Um, switches. Again, we, we got we got switches out the wazoo. I don't have the Silver T8SG in here. I actually have that in my bedroom. I was flying the Proto Z. The Proto Z with it uh, on the original one. But, I mean, we have... Essentially, we have the same thing that's on the right one um minus the fact we have an extra toggle up top we still have our rollers here we are we when it went from the silver t8sg it had these buttons here they took them away and gave us rollers we have both on here um 
I like it. I like it a lot, man. I like this drone too. Seven dollars. Seven dollars. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, smash the subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely get at me. And uh, again, we were using a Firefly action camera. We'll link that down below. Um, I will link the Jumper group on Facebook if you want to get more familiar with the Jumper group. It's actually the group associated with the people that make these. It's not just some person that made the group, so you get direct communication there um we'll link two action cameras the one that i'm using and the one i generally use that gets excellent excellent times man um this thing sees has to see over an hour of time and that's fully charging and fully discharging um we'll link the jumper t t12 and uh for wholesalers i have a link for this later